Today we're going to have a look at two of our older buildings and they are St. Albans Anglican Church and Zion United Church. Prior to the churches being built, traveling ministers held services in the dining room of the Ashcroft Hotel. The bar was closed and the men rounded up and ushered in. When the new school was built, services were also held there. In 1890, Canon Cooper, who had been traveling to Ashcroft and holding some of these services, proposed the building of an Anglican church. At about the same time, Reverend Sheldrick visited the town and was encouraged by resident John Glassy to make plans for a small church building. Two plans were drawn up by master carpenter William Higginbottom, and Sheldrick chose one. A few donations were pledged, and although the prospects for the rest of the funds did not look promising, a committee was formed which began fundraising for the money needed to build the church. By the time the construction of St. Albans Anglican Church began in May of 1891, the population of the town had grown considerably, and they contributed handsomely. Land for the church, situated at the corner of Fifth and Brink, was donated by J.C. Barnes. Construction of the building was entrusted to William Higginbottom, and work on it was completed in July of 1891. Higginbottom also did the interior work, such as the pews, railing, and altar. According to Higginbottom, the church cost about $750, and this included the pews, an organ, and the church bell. The church was opened by Bishop Silito, assisted by Rev. Sheldrick. During the incumbency of Rev. Ancy Dorrell, who served from 1896 to 1910, furnishings were received from St. Albans Church in London. Many years ago, the old wooden supports were replaced by a concrete foundation. In 1949, the interior of the church was redecorated, including some hand-painted windows done by Mrs. J. L. Clark, wife of the then vicar. In the early 1960s, a hall was built. This church with the red door has beautiful stained glass windows and other glass mosaics, and every Friday it's home to soups on. Inside the sanctuary, you will still find the original pews and altar. A most recent renovation to the church was the installation of solar paneling. Next we visit Zion United Church, originally Zion Presbyterian Church. The first Presbyterian missionary to visit Ashcroft was more than likely Rev. George Murray of Lower Nicola. It was his initiative in 1890 that appointed Presbyterian missionary T.G. McLeod to serve as Ashcroft in Clinton. Under McLeod, a congregation grew and two years later a committee was formed to undertake the construction of a church. People of various church affiliations, Baptists, Anglicans, Methodists, and Presbyterians took part in the planning and building. A loan of $600 was obtained from the ministry. Other monetary donations were received, and many of the same names appear as donating to both the building of the Anglican Church and the Presbyterian Church. The site for the church was donated by board member J.J. McKay and C.P. Rand. The lumber arrived via CPR in August of 1891 and Ashcroft carpenter Walter Fern began construction. The lumber for the pews arrived in January of 1892 and in May the first service was held. A church bell was donated in 1894 in memory of W.B. Gladwin. The Methodists and Presbyterians continued to worship together for a few years and then the Methodists decided to build their own church. It was completed in the summer of 1898 and dedicated by Rev. James Turner, pioneer missionary of the Caribou and Klondike. The Methodist Church provided valuable service to the community for a few years. However, it closed during the war and it never reopened. In 1925, the Presbyterians, Methodists and Congregational Churches joined to form the United Church of Canada. The Methodist Church was put on skids, drawn by two horses and moved to the back of the Presbyterian Church. The trip, which covered a mere block and a half, took three days. The Methodist Church now became the Sunday School Hall. In 1960, the hall was torn down to be replaced by a modern building which included a well-furnished kitchen. A popular fundraiser put on by the United Church Women was its annual Bean Supper. This event lasted for 70 years beginning in 1945 
and the last one was served in 2016 with many members of the community assisting. The church with its original lofty ceilings still has some of the original windows and the original oil lamps. The churches were the hub of the social life of the community. The ladies' groups were especially active. Relations between the different denominations were good, and they would cooperate and participate in each other's functions, such as bazaars, Thanksgiving services, and other celebrations. <laughs>